Oh no. As I mentioned the other day, if I manage to get 100 likes on that one community post, I will eat the jelly beans that came with the 2,000 die cast. So these are jelly beans that were packed in 2,000. So these jelly beans are older than me. So, oh my gosh, I got, I got water on standby and a spit cup in case I need to spit them out. Probably will have to because these, these cannot taste good. These cannot friggin taste good after all this time. Okay, they don't smell like too bad. All right. All right, I usually like the orange ones. So, here we go. Do these things taste good after 20 years? Let's find out. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, these things still taste good. They're like a little chewy, but these don't taste that bad. I was, back, I was expecting these things to taste terrible, but no. These things actually taste good like 20 years later. They're, like they're chewy, but... They, they taste good. So, there we go, guys. Jelly bellies are still good after 20 years. They're insanely chewy, and they'll probably stick to your teeth a little bit, but they're good. Hello, everybody, and welcome to... We have made it to the 10th episode of the Burnout series, which is wild. And this week, it is all about Bristol Dirt. And I don't like it. Yeah, I said it. Now, I know what you might be thinking. But Noah, did you even watch the race? It was fantastic! It was so much action, the racing wasn't boring. It was so exciting and full of action. Yes, I agree with you. The race was really good. So you might be thinking, why don't I like the Bristol Dirt Track then, if I thought the racing was good there? Well, simple. It's unnecessary. See, a lot of people have forgotten the reason that we have the Bristol Dirt Race to begin with. The reason that NASCAR decided to do the Bristol Dirt gimmick was to get butts and seats for the Spring Bristol Race. The problem is, is that NASCAR doesn't actually understand why people don't go to the Spring Bristol Race. It's not that the racing is bad, come on, it's Bristol, this racing's fantastic there. The problem is only one thing. The weather. It rains there a lot. As a matter of fact, it's like 90% of the time the Spring Bristol Race gets rained out, so why even bother getting tickets for a race that you're probably not even going to see? Because by the time the race gets resumed, you're going to have to go back to work on Monday. So NASCAR decided, eh. Racing must be boring, so let's just put dirt on the track, which on paper actually sounds like a fantastic idea. But in practice, it really doesn't work as well as it should. Like, sure, the racing is absolutely amazing. We got to see some great finishes over the years. And we got to see a lot of crashes, even though I think that's a bad thing, because that means the racing is extremely slower, and we have a lot of cautions. But the thing is, is that why I don't like it is because why? There's no reason to do this. Putting dirt on bristles like putting whipped cream on pizza, if you ask me. It's like, sure, it probably wouldn't be too bad, and I'd probably like it, but what's the point? I understand NASCAR wants to sort of go back to its roots back with dirt racing, but if you ask me, I think NASCAR would be better off going to a traditional dirt track, like Knoxville, or Eldora, or I-70s being turned into a dirt track soon. Or I have another idea, which I'll talk about in a future video, that if you saw it on a comment on another YouTuber, I already talked about, but I think would actually be a fantastic idea for a NASCAR dirt race, if we manage to make it work. Yeah, if you ask me, I love the Bristol Dirt Race for its racing, but it just seems kind of pointless, if you ask me. And I think NASCAR would just be better off just canning the spring race entirely and focusing on the Bristol Night Race. But that's just my opinion about the Bristol Dirt Race. You can disagree with me if you want, you thought this was a fantastic idea. I just feel like the hassle and the expenses for getting this race going, I feel like is relatively kind of overkill for a race that's already going to be good regardless. All right, so first things first, of course, Christopher Bell winning his first race of the season, and also JGR's first win of the season as well, which, if you ask me, was absolutely well-deserved. I mean, Bell was the silent threat throughout this race. Most of this race was pretty much dominated by Tyler Ruddick and Kyle Larson, but Christopher Bell was in the shadows throughout the race and struck at the proper time, scoring the victory. Meanwhile, my prediction Tyler Reddick finished second, which I have seen a lot this season where my predictions end up finishing second in the race. <laughs> yeah, for the most part, the race was pretty good. I wasn't a fan of all the cautions that came out because 
I feel like that's why a lot of people like the race was because there are those fans with the three second attention span I mentioned before. Every single lap, there's gonna be either a crash or some insane restart. Not saying it was a bad race, mind you, but I feel like it was a little, little slow for my taste. But yeah, we got to see a lot of the dirt pros that were running up at the front of this race. Um, some of the big ones like Kyle Larson, uh, Ch Chase Briscoe was another one, Christopher Bell, of course, being the winner. Tyler Reddick was up there as well. Even some other drivers that, like, that have been racing up front at the dirt races in the past, like, uh, Ricky Stenhouse was up there as well. But I think one of the biggest, uh, surprises this week was RCR as a team. Kyle Busch was up there, like usual. After all, he managed to win last year's Bristol Dirt Race after beating out Briscoe and Reddick for the victory. And even Austin Dillon was up there for a while. I think he finished second in the race, which, if you ask me, a lot of people call Austin Dillon sort of a hack, a sort of driver that was only in the car because daddy owns the team. But when he shows up and performs, he shows up and performs. We got to see that last year at Daytona. We got to see it this year at the Clash. And we got to see it this year at Bristol Dirt, which I feel like with his help with Kyle Busch, he's going to be a fantastic driver for RCR in the coming years. He might actually finally break out and be a consistent driver now. And another thing to talk about is some good old fashioned ground beef that came out this weekend. Ryan Priest versus Kyle Larson. So apparently what happened was uh, Kyle Larson put Ryan Priest into the wall, mainly because the concrete was showing around at this time and the drivers were starting to lose grip on the track. Huh, it's almost like putting dirt on a track that wasn't designed for dirt racing is a bad idea or something. Probably just me. But yeah, uh, Larson put Priest in the wall, none of them lost positions, and everything was pretty good at the end. But Ryan was not amused. <laughs> So yeah, and then Priest put Lars in the wall, take him out of the race, which uh, both of them were pretty angry about it, so don't be surprised if Larson puts Priest in the wall next weekend. <laughs> I really want to see, eventually, I really want to see one of these drivers just go full on cold trickle and just absolutely plow into them on the final lap or something, it'd be funny. Stupid, and probably will get suspended for it, but it'd be funny. Uh, one more thing to talk about for this race, probably worth talking about, was, uh, Michael McDowell with the double 360, so he went, woo, and then he went, woo, two times in the race, and didn't cause any wrecks, and <laughs> got disposition for the most part, so, man, McDowell, he, he's been doing really good over the past couple races as well, he's been finishing a lot in the top 10 as of recent, so, so I think Front Row and McDowell are actually starting to become actual contenders, um, so, Eh, I don't think they're really going to be winning every week worthy, but considering how McDowell managed to save that car both times, I think his talent is really beginning to show in that 34 car. So, give it some time, and win number two is right around the corner, guys. So, yeah, and then that's pretty much it for the cup race for the most part. I mean, it was pretty eventful, pretty fun, but I still don't think Bristol Dirt's a good idea. I think NASCAR would just be better off just canning that spring race, focus on the night race, uh, move the night race to 4th of July weekend, like I said before, so, just my idea. Um, especially like I mentioned before, it just, this track was never designed for dirt racing, and we really got to show it in the second half of the cup race, where the concrete was beginning to show underneath the dirt, and the drivers were starting to lose grip in the corners, so. And I feel like that was one of the biggest negatives of that race. Like, the racing's good there, I just don't like the concept behind it, it just kind of feels pointless. And then the truck race, uh, not really much really noteworthy to talk about aside from just a buttload of cautions, and, uh, Joey Logano won the race. Talk about a pretty mediocre weekend if Logano wins it, so. Alright. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it talking about for the Bristol Dirt Race. Uh, didn't really focus too much on the truck race. I don't even know where Byron finished in that race. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, before we move on to the other news, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and that's it. I already have your liver, I don't need anything. So first things first, um, for the other news, ha involves a certain driver that was not in the race this week in that Bristol Dirt. Um, Matt Crafton was in the 51 car, uh, for the reason, because of personal reasons why Cody Ware wasn't in the car. Which we later found out the next day, it was because Cody Ware was arrested! What?! I think you- I don't- I don't remember because I don't have it on the script, but I think it was for like assault or something. Which... Wow. Wow, wow, wow. 
So, yep, apparently right now Cody Ware is suspended indefinitely at this time, so... Yeah, Cody Ware's season's over at this point. Uh, I don't think his career's over, he's probably gonna be back next season. But, at this point, he's probably not gonna be back in the 51 car until next season, so... The question is now, who is going to be in the 51 for the rest of the season? Uh, this weekend Matt Kraft was in there, I don't think he's gonna be in there full time. Because he's more of a truck driver, and he's sort of at the tail end of his career, so I don't think he's gonna be... Uh, in that car full-time, the 51, so... It's probably gonna be a driver that, uh... Is sort of been a driver that's been in the 51 car or went with Rick Ware before. So, uh, Zane Smith's name has been thrown around a lot, but if you ask me, I feel like it's probably gonna be Riley Herbst. Uh, yeah, that sounds pretty bad, but... I have a feeling Riley Herbst is gonna be in the car. So get ready, guys! Caution Clock's back, even though he finished top 10 in the 500 by some friggin' miracle. Uh, yeah, ex probably expecting Riley Herbst to be in that car, so... Uh, next up, I think, before we move on to the, uh, the last part we're gonna talk about, uh, there was a major boycott at a NASCAR team meeting, uh, last week. A bunch of drivers and teams just straight up didn't show up, and it was because of a disagreement on revenue-related stuff, so... Yeah, that is a bad sign for NASCAR if, if their drivers are straight up walking out of meetings. Apparently, it's just there's some a lot of stuff that NASCAR drivers are disagreeing on right now. And if you ask me, I am a little bit nervous that we're pretty much one incident away from another kart IndyCar split. Because uh, you got NASCAR now, you also got SRX, and you got the Cars Tour. Which, I mean, you got three different organizations, and easily NASCAR could split into those three organizations, which... Honestly, kind of terrifies me a little bit. We're kind of one incident away from seeing a split. Because NASCAR's relationship with drivers and teams is at an all-time low at this point. I think it's because NASCAR is focusing more on fan demands more than drivers. Which I feel like should be a balance. Like, you should definitely focus on the drivers that are actually performing for your sport while still listening to fans as well. So, and I feel like NASCAR's listening to fans a little bit too much at this point. So, I feel like... Everyone should be treated equally. I do love, feel like I'm actually a big part of NASCAR now, but at the same time, I don't really feel like I'm forcing drivers to do stuff I want, rather than wanting to see what they want to do, so. That's pretty much it for everything else. But, before we go, we got one more thing. Round number three of Penalty Palooza. As we had a lot of penalties stand, as well as one penalty that was introduced. First things first, remember what I said about Hendrick Privilege last week and that Hendrick could break as many rules as they want while any other team would get the book thrown at them? Well, we got to see it this week with Colleg Racing pretty much being penalized for a similar uh, penalty that Hendrick got at Phoenix. Their penalty still stands. Don't just love that. So yeah, Colleg still has to suffer for a penalty that Hendrick got away with. But unfortunately for us, uh, Hendrick actually got penalized for something else this weekend at Richmond, as both Alex Bowman and William Byron were penalized for what's on my script, a uh, greenhouse-related stuff at Richmond. Apparently they were just messing with the air, I'm guessing. So, yeah, I, I really don't know. I'm not really that expert with uh, technical stuff as I'm getting notifications on my phone. Come on. Alright, and then lastly, um, the last penalty that stayed was Hanlon's penalty from, I believe, Phoenix, where he put Chastain to the wall on purpose because he was guaranteed to lose. And he fully admitted it on his podcast. And he tried, and he tried to appeal the penalty, even though he fully admitted to doing it. How stupid are you, man? <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it for Penalty Palooza, and that's pretty much it for all the news this weekend. Yeah, there, there really wasn't much stuff to talk about on my script. I probably missed out on a bunch of stuff, but if I did, I will talk about it in the comments if you guys want to ask me a question about something I didn't talk about. Alright, and then finally, before we go, we got our predictions for the final short track in the short track sweep. It's Martinsville! Let's go ahead and take a look at the predictions. They're probably going to be pretty mundane and mediocre. Uh, first things first for trucks... Kyle Busch is pretty much going to be in the obvious answer, because he pretty much wins every truck race now. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. Um, moving on to the Xfinity, I'm actually going to be going with John Hunter Nemechek again. Especially since John Hunter Nemechek was my first prediction I got right this year, after he won at Auto Club earlier this year. That's my main prediction for that. And lastly, for the Cup Series, I'm actually going to be going with Joey Logano, scoring his second victory of the season, and being the second multi-time winner of the season, along with William Byron. 
So that that's it for my predictions. Still got my predict my my script from Richmond on the floor, and I got I got a lot of stuff. I got my coda I got my coda script as well, so I gotta keep these intact. I think everything except for the Vegas one I still have. So, all right. So yeah, thank you guys so much, and I will see you all next week for the Martinsville video. I feel like I didn't talk about much this week, but I don't care. All right, back to eating the 20-year-old jelly beans. Oh, gosh, that one, that one's hard. <laughs>